Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. So Elon Musk buys Twitter and takes it private. What does that mean for the users? Are there going to be any new restrictions, new features? Is there going to be a, a difference in the way the software is going to work? Well, we'll have to wait and see. First, I want to touch upon what does it mean when you take a public company private? Viewers, this is not the first time a high-tech company has been taken private. I believe it was Dell first and then Western Digital. And in 2007, I know Western Digital went private and then both these companies came back public and and they the time they took it private the stock price or the time they came back was a much higher value so what happens when you take a company private you see most companies when they initially have a product is it's usually what is called as unicorn for instance if you take dell it was computers now dell had to diversify from desktops to laptops to gaming laptops to servers you get the idea right in each one of these things there is a slightly different vertical a different hardware a different way in which you configure the systems you can't really have a desktop manufacturer go and also become a server manufacturer. the requirements are different so Dell had bought a few companies uh, I think it was in the late 90s or early 2000s, which were not making money, but they were still committed to pay those companies the whatever money they needed to do. So in a sense, what they had were poorly performing companies in on their balance sheets. So in order to clean up that, they took it private away from the sinosphere of the public, meaning like away from the eyes of the public, so that whatever they wanted to do, whether it is cutting companies, cutting jobs, closing down plants, uh, firing people, and at the same time, they were also firing some from the existing groups also, all this could be done away from the eyes of the public. That's what happened in the case of Dell. That's what happened in the case of Western Digital also because Western Digital again was something that was seen primarily as a hard disk company, a storage company. However, there were many other technologies that Western Digital had acquired as part of its growth, which were like, for example, you know, solid state drives, storage for servers, which is different from storage for desktop, which is different from storage for laptop. You get the idea. They were also selling a lot of uh, uh, storage for uh, smartphone manufacturers. But in the case of Western Digital, since I know some of the people who are involved, I can share a little bit more insight. So what had happened was that Western Digital, you know, it was flying very high. I'm, I'm talking about the mid 80s. Well, I'm going way back. It was flying very high. And then Western Digital started acquiring companies and then in their zeal to start marketing or, or uh, you know, uh, capturing other markets, they even bought a chipset company. Now, here's where the problem comes. A chipset company is somebody who gave you chipsets with which OEM or original equipment manufacturers, uh, you know, in Taiwan could build desktop systems. They used to call them white box because these are all generic brands. And, and then they wanted to say, okay, you have the chipsets from us, you also get the storage from us. You know, that kind of a linking up with storage. However, that plan fell flat and in WD had run up a lot of uh, black, a uh, lot of red ink, which is like losses in their, uh, in their balance sheet. So they needed to get rid of some of the dead wood. And uh, they did that. And then they focused on storage, which is hard disk storage. Now, as the hard disk storage market started shrinking at one point we had eight or nine hard disk drive manufacturers seagate western digital quantum then uh, toshiba hitachi uh, um, then there were a couple of other many scribe uh, out of colorado so there were all these companies and, and then the market started shrinking you know integration and uh, you know uh, the, the the market became more and more uh, on um, it shrunk in terms of players. So I think Quantum was bought by Seagate. That was a big one because Quantum was number three. So the Western Digital, Quantum and Seagate were one, two and three, if you will. There was also a company called Connor Peripherals. 
and uh, Connor was actually a salesperson from Western Digital who got pissed off on one day and then he said I'm going to start my own company and Connor Peripherals had a fairly good hard disk drive also and, and that was one of the first ones to fall by the wayside by the way. Long story short what happens in these cases is the uh, market started becoming smaller so at the end in the end you had only four companies left it was uh, Western, Western Digital, it was uh, Seagate, it was Toshiba, and it was Hitachi, four companies left. And in the United States, most government organizations are big companies, like say Fortune 500 companies. They always want what is called as a second source, meaning like if their primary source was Seagate, they wanted to have another source, which is also based in the US, who can supply uh, them with say storage in case the primary has a problem, whether it is supply chain problem or it just goes under. So always you need to have a second source and Western Digital became that second source. So they went and bought all these chipset companies, things didn't work out, they cleaned up their balance sheet, came back and concentrated being a storage company. And, and that really helped them focus. They got bigger and bigger and they even bought SanDisk, which was a giant in flash storage company, you know, flash memory. And, and they bought them also. Today, Western Digital owns SanDisk. So is this what's going to happen to Twitter? Let's take a look at some of the acquisitions of Twitter and see if any of those things uh, would perhaps face the ax. One of the acquisitions was Periscope because they wanted to buy Periscope so that they could do video. Uh, and uh, you know video was okay I, I, I guess at some point of time they discarded the periscope technology integrated that inside the Twitter code base I remember having to transition from a particular URL which said PS, P, PSCP periscope PRCP whatever it is to Twitter so anyway so that happened I think about two two and a half years ago so Twitter has I think now a chance to clean up some of the deadwood, clean up some of the rebel elements. I have told you in my previous uh, hangouts or monologues that um, there is a confusion in the minds of many people who are working in companies such as Twitter, Facebook, Google, etc., where they are having a confusion between their professional obligations and their personal inclinations for politics. So when these two get confused, you get something similar to what we are seeing with a certain minority in India. So some of them may face the ax. In fact, I fully expect the upper management to be fired by Elon Musk. Elon Musk is not someone who is going to have anyone who doesn't tow his line uh, along with him. And I think I expect that people like Para, uh, you know, Agarwal and uh, Vijaya Gadde, who's a legal officer, all of them I think will probably be shown the door. Anyway, but for the user, what does it mean? I expect that Twitter will be more middle. However, Twitter has one problem, revenue model. What happened with the revenue model? Twitter's revenue model, I have used Twitter to advertise quite a bit. However, I had to stop it after spending thousands of dollars because I was not getting any stickiness from Twitter. Let me explain to you what stickiness is. So you take daily global insights that I and Sridhar Chityalaji were hosting. We had 330 odd episodes. Now, about 250 of those we promoted every day. As soon as the program airs, we will promote it back on Twitter. So whenever we promote it, we get we got a good amount of views. Say if we don't promote, if you just let it go, we would be around 300 views after a 24 hour period because we were doing it five days a week. The next day there's a new episode. Now, but what was happening was every time we promoted it, we would get 20,000 views. But as soon as we stop promoting it, again, we will fall back to 300. This is what a stickiness is. Stickiness would mean when 20,000 people were looking at our uh, news, surely more people were interested in knowing because we were bang on. On many of the things we predicted, we were bang on. And yet we were not getting the stickiness. What we were expecting was once you take the sales uh, boost out that organically the program would grow. It was just a single program that was being promoted. Yet we saw that organically it fell back to the same 300, 350 and it continues to be that even today unless 
one thing happens. What is that one thing? Unless someone whose handle is not shadow banned retweets one of our programs. And if that person has thousands of followers, then we see a lot of views. What does it tell you that P Guru's handle, Sri Ayer handle and many other handles, we are all shadow banned, but they don't mind taking our money, then they'll spread it out. So how do you think I feel when I, I, I'm expecting some stickiness and I get zero stickiness? So maybe many of Twitter's customers are probably feeling the same way. So as to whether I will go back to advertising, uh -uh, unless I see organic growth, my follower count in P Gurus is stuck at 40,000. My follower count at Sri Iyer handle is stuck at 28, 29,000. Surely people are, new people are coming online. Surely new people are watching some of our programs because P Gurus doesn't stick to one format or one topic. We, we give you a wide range of views and opinions. Sometimes we'll have 180 degree difference in opinion between two subject matter experts we bring on. Why do we do that? The idea is to educate you to let you develop your own perspective. This is where things are. So I don't know whether under Elon Musk, some of these things will go away. For example, my shadow ban will go away. I, I know some people who have multi-million followers who are also under active shadow ban. I don't know if that will go away or not, but I can tell you this, Elon Musk is his own man. and He will do what he thinks is right. My guess is he'll clean up all these things and then come back and take Twitter public again and make a fat profit. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our program and do not forget to click on the bell button. Namaskar.